who uh, I believe you know, uh, for our episode that just went live today. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be talking to Aubrey today. So uh, he, uh, funny enough, had a good question. I thought I'd be the first one to go with. Uh, he asked, um, uh, I'm just going to quote it directly because that, that seems a little uh, easier. Why we still don't have any therapies based on his ideas published 20 years ago in his breakout paper, an engineer's approach to anti-aging medicine, and what could be done to accelerate the, po- the progress? You know, what were the bottlenecks, that type of thing? So, I uh, am, as Mark, of course, knows, um, progress has been pretty good, but the fact is really difficult technological uh, challenges usually take a long time to come to fruition. A quick note, Uncle Sam wants you to help make this show successful. Subscribe and become a member today. Now, over most of that period, I was going to say over the first 15 of those 20 years, uh, the main problem was money. The, the science was very much held back by budgetary constraints, I would say, for the first decade, um, and for, the, for the 2000s, probably by a factor of maybe three. You know, it was really, really being held back. I was doing my absolute level best to bring money in, and so were other people, of course, but it was only very inadequate. But it was a lot better than nothing, which means progress was made, um, and of course, progress was made by other people as well, not necessarily for the purpose of um, postponing aging, but rather in regenerative medicine and other medical approaches generally. And long and short of it is that eventually it kind of added up to a sufficient critical mass that, first of all, academics started becoming a good deal more positive about this whole damage repair approach than they had been initially. And then around the same time, very shortly afterwards, one or two and then a few more and then a few more of the more courageous um, early stage investors, angel investors, you know, seed investors, started to come out of the woodwork and think to themselves, you know, some of this looks like it might be close enough to fruition to actually make some money. Um, So we started getting interest from such people. And the thing about investors is they tend to write bigger checks than donors do. So... Um, we embraced this very much. We ran with it. And so my foundation spun out in the end about half a dozen companies. Um, basically, the projects had been gestated within the foundation, purely funded philanthropically for however long it was taking. And we spun them out as, uh, as startups. And it was very, very effective. Um, and of course, things have moved on at an accelerating pace over the past few years, with more and more investors getting involved and writing you know, bigger and bigger checks and companies like Altos coming along and, um, and you know, Retro and New Limit and other uh, people, companies that are really quite big, including ones that are run by real long-term crusaders in the field. So good examples there would be in silico medicine and also BioAge, big companies now. Um, And so, yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, it's a very hard challenge. So the short answer to the question is, you know, I'm not complaining about how fast it's gone. We've we've, we've gone as fast as I I think it would have been reasonable to expect. But also, I think that at this point, we can really have pretty good confidence that we're getting close.